Hey everybody, welcome to Lightspeed Tips. Today I'm going to show you a couple of different ways you can use vendor returns in Lightspeed POS. So in order to best demonstrate vendor returns, I've set up a generic product in our system. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now if I click over to purchase orders, you'll see I have two orders set up. The first one is for a sample product. It's going to be set up in our showroom when it arrives. The hypothetical situation I'm going to show you here is what happens if that product shows up damaged or defective. I'm going to show you how you can set up a vendor return to send the product back and transfer out the inventory. Heading back to our purchase orders, you'll see that this order is for five units and this is just going to be for sales inventory. So the hypothetical situation I'll show you here is what happens when our shipping department receives seven units instead of five. I'll show you how to back out the inventory when something is received incorrectly. So let's start with our first problem. Let's go into that purchase order for the sample product. We'll check it in. We'll add the received item to our inventory. And remember, this product showed up damaged. So once this product arrived, one of the employees took it to set it up and realized that it didn't even turn on. It wouldn't start up. So it was a defective product and we're going to need to send it back to the vendor. So to do that, we come over to our inventory menu, click on vendor return, and then click new vendor return. We have to select the vendor. And if you have multiple shops, you might want to select the correct shop that it's leaving from. And then we'll click create vendor return. So I just want to brief you real quickly on what the vendor return form looks like. You'll see that we have a vendor return number. You'll see it shows what shop it's coming from and what vendor it's going to. You'll see the status of the vendor return and Lightspeed will also show you the employee that created the vendor return. You'll see that there's vendor information here. You can also edit the vendor details or hide them all together if you wish. There's a spot for a reference number and general notes. You'll see there's a cost summary. As we add products to the vendor return, the return value will go up. You can also add shipping costs and other costs if you need to. Okay, so let's send this defective unit back. We're gonna simply add it to our vendor return form. And now I wanna point out that the purchase order will default to the most recent one. If you need to select another PO number, you can do that here. We're looking for the one with one unit on it, so let's select 631. And now you're going to want to select a reason for return. See in this drop down menu, there's predetermined reasons that you can select from. We'll select defective. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you how you can add your own custom reasons. Now you'll see our cost summary is updated. We're going to return this item for $10 worth of credit. And we're also going to put a quick note in here. Okay, so now we've got our vendor return form all filled out. The last thing we need to do is send the product away. So once our shipping department confirms that the product has been sent back to the vendor, we simply go in and click send to vendor. Lightspeed's gonna give you a quick warning. Make sure you read that over the first time. And when you're happy, click send. You'll notice the return status has been updated to sent. And once we've confirmed that we've received the credit for the defective product, we'll go ahead and mark this vendor return as closed. If you need to reopen this vendor return for any reason, you can do that under more actions. Okay, so there we go. That was pretty easy. We've sent back our defective unit. Now someone just needs to go ahead and order the replacement. In the meantime, let's head back to our generic product and we'll look at the purchase orders. We'll go ahead and click into that purchase order with five units for sales stock. And remember what I said, we're gonna assume that our shipping department actually makes a mistake here. We're gonna click into check-in mode and we're gonna receive seven units. We only ordered five, but we're gonna receive seven units. We're gonna add the receive to our inventory and now you'll see there's a message here, extra received, we received too many. So there's no way to back this out in Lightspeed. Once we've clicked received to inventory, that action is final and cannot be undone. So to fix this, we're gonna set up a vendor return to correct the inventory. 
Go ahead and click over to your inventory menu and then back to vendor return. And we'll go ahead and start a new vendor return, select the right vendor and click create vendor return. So the first thing we should do is add a note just so that anybody who ever looks at this is gonna know why we did this vendor return. Okay, great, let's click save changes and now let's add the product to this vendor return. So because we've already done a vendor return on that previous purchase order, Lightspeed will automatically default to the next one in line. So purchase order 632 is already selected and under reason for return, we're gonna select wrong quantity. We're gonna return two units in total at the cost of $25. This is gonna correct everything. It's gonna correct the inventory and also the cost averaging. So when we're ready to finalize this, let's click send to vendor, click send to confirm, and then we'll go ahead and mark it as closed. So that's how you use vendor returns in a nutshell. Now, let me show you how you can set up custom return reasons in Lightspeed. Click back over to your inventory menu and scroll all the way to the bottom and you're looking for vendor return reasons. You'll see a list of all those vendor return reasons. You can reorder the way they appear in the list or you can also add new reasons. So now you'll see that generic reason is added to the list. And if we go back over to our vendor return and set up a new one, you'll see that under reasons, you can now select that return reason that I just set up. So anyways, that's how vendor returns work in Lightspeed POS. I really hope this video helped you out. Please hit the thumbs up if it did and make sure you subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos. Thank you very much for checking this out. I appreciate you and I appreciate your time. Have a great day.